All right, so my capstone is called Design, Construct, and Testing of a DC Vibrator Sample Magnetometer, um, also known as VSM. Uh, my advisor is Dr. Hanta Shri and my name is Andrew. Before we begin with our research, we have, a, sorry. Um, I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> So before I begin with my research, I wonder if I did not press it. Was there a video in here? Use the arrow keys, maybe the pointer is turning it off. VSM. I wanted to show you before I begin um, my research what, what's a VSM basically. Uh, you have a power supply, you have an electromagnet, you got a, a mechanical vibrator, uh, here's a magnet, sorry, the DC power supply on this side, and then we have a computer. So to um, get one of these, the price range is about 100000 and my goal was to make a VSM that's inexpensive, that doesn't cost a lot of money, uh, using the components already provided in the lab. So basically, what is a VSM? Uh, VSM measures the characteristic, characteristic properties of magnetic material. Um, the characteristic property that we're going to be researching is uh, hysteresis loop. Um, the measurements sh uh, show the state of the electron spin. See, you see right here that the ferromagnetic material is spinning in different directions, um, pointing at different directions, sorry. And then you have a magnetic field of zero. Once you provide this magnetic field, the electron spin point in the direction of the magnetic field. Um, and then really use uh, <coughs> this, basically, since you cannot see it um, visually, you have uh, to use Faraday's law, which is this one right here. Uh, Faraday's law states that when you have a wire connected to a gauss meter, and then there's no, and you have a magnet close to it, and you're not moving this magnet, there's no current. But once you move this magnet, there's change in flux, causing an electron, or I mean, causing a current within the wire and having voltage, basically. So how is this related? Uh, voltage induced due to the change in flux, so you see the equation here. We have uh, the change in magnetic field, or change in flux, and then equals the uh, voltage. We're going to use the voltage to for our hysteresis loop. So what is the hysteresis loop? A hysteresis loop is a cycle of alternating changes in volume and magnetic properties. It's also its relation between magnetic flux density and the magnetic field. You see right here, we start with our sample, it's magnetic field is zero, and the flux density is zero. Once you start moving um, or increasing the magnetic field, you start getting this uh, increase in flux density, and then you saturate it. Once you decrease the magnetic field, you start to see that there's a remnant once you reach to zero for magnetic field. And because there's uh, remnants here, so since there's uh, flux density within the material, so what you're trying to do now is trying to uh, have a magnetic, uh, prior another negative magnetic field, um, and then you, once you prior, you will be able to reach the magnetic flux to zero in this uh, cordicivity, it's called. And then, of course, you do the same thing, um, provide magnetic, the negative magnetic field, you saturate it, and you get the same, uh, if you provide a positive magnetic field, then you start to get this, uh, same like symmetry, basically. And then this will basically prove to us that our VSM works. This, the whole point of this history is to prove that our v, since we're building this VSM with the components in, in the lab, this all this is gonna work out. So this is a system diagram of what basically a VSM is. And we have LabVIEW, we is connected to the power supply, which is also connected to a lock and amplifier. We have the mechanical vibrator, we have the straw, the pickup coil that is connected to a lock and amplifier, and then that goes back to the lab view. And then, of course, the DC mechanism. For our components, we have the mechanical vibrator, the pickup coil, the lock and amplifier, the plastic straw where the sample is attached to. We, have a, we use two magnets. Uh, we use a solenoid and we use an electromagnet, and then we use a DC power supply. 
So a locking amplifier extracts signal from an unknown carrier. For me, it would have been the function generator, and then we have the uh, extract signal from a noisy environment. So how it works, basically we have this function generator that provides a frequency, which um, is attached to the reference, and is added to this multiplier, and then this frequency is also attached to, or is connected to the mechanical vibrator, which um, the vibrator vibrates the sample, and the pick of coil picks up the same frequency, which is sent to the multiplier, and then you do this equation, you get to get this output right here, and it's proportional to B, which B is our input voltage, or our amplitude here. So this is how it basically works in um, using the, our experiment here. We have, uh, basically you have a lot of you, you send um, the, the initial and the final of the voltage to the power <coughs> supply. The power supply then is, um, connected to changes the voltage, and then since the sample is oscillating, the changing magnetic field um, happens, and then the induced voltage is picked up by the pickup coil, where the pickup coil sends the information to the locking amplifier, which sends it to the lab view, and lab view extracts that and puts it in a text file for you to graph it out and get your data. Here is lab view. Um, this is basically how it looks like in the programming, uh, kind of the background um, of the program. We have the initial, the final voltage, the step sizes. So our step size was 0.25. Our initial voltage uh, was 0 to 15, and then going back to the to uh, 0 and just going back and forth to get that positive and negative. Um, then we did the measurements of each uh, point. It was 50. It wasn't 100. It was 50. Uh, this is just an example, but our measurement was 50, and then, of course, uh, it averaged out and gave us one point. So we uh, did the measurement for that one point, and it was 50. And then, of course, the component in the background. So our samples that we used was iron wire sample, and then we used a razor blade sample. So the first experiment, we used this solenoid. Um, basically, it vibrates. We calibrated the um, solenoid voltage to a B field. So the number, uh, if you have, let's say, 20 volts, is how much B field you're going to have from a hit field. Then this is the data that um, we got from this iron wire sample. Uh, we it looks like we're trying to get the hysteresis, but it's not there. We don't see the, the hysteresis there. It's kind of like linear, but you don't see it. Then we use the second magnet, which is DC magnet, uh, electromagnet. Um, basically, this uh, electromagnet gave us a stronger uh, hysteresis uh, from trying to to the next. Oh, sorry, just the calibration, of course. Um, our data shows the iron wire. We get this perfect hysteresis. And then I decided, well, maybe we could use a, kind of another uh, sample and see the difference kind of deviation from the pure sample. And we get this razor blade sample, and it looks a lot more perfect compared to the pure sample. And, but it started at a field, uh, sorry, flux density at 50, 49, 40, 43, and it just when you see the loop, there's only one loop, but there's not multiple loops. So in all this is just one loop. And then kind of I wanted to know what made this magnetic. Why was it uh, better, actually better than the iron sample? And I just saw that there was basically you use this EDX and SEM kind of to see the, ins the microscopic of how it looks like um, from the sample. And then the EDX to see an in an elemental analysis. Um, and you can see with iron, we have aluminum, so again, you can see percentage here. And then we have future direction, hopefully, build the inexpensive VSM uh, using this DC magnet. It's uh, a lot bigger and a lot stronger, but right now we're having troubles with noise that uh, we're picking up from the power supply and from all the equipment right next to it. Um, we also be able to um, hopefully get increased the sensitivity and measure more kind of magnetic behaviors of um, the sample. And I want to acknowledge thanks to the mechanical work to John Collins and and Steve Anderson, so well, I don't know. <laughs> Steve Anderson. I mean, John Collins too. Yeah, that's it.